everyone i know it's time so a very warm welcome to today's edition of daily wisdom from bhagavad gita hope you are doing good and uh, had a great weekend or having a great weekend so welcome let me share my screen and we will get underway um, you know i'm taking this session from bharat today so it's excited to be back going to be there here for about a week um So anyways, let me share my screen. Okay, you need to make me co-host. I cannot share my screen. It's disabled somewhere. Somebody has to make me co-host. Okay, great. Thank you. Let me share my screen. All good so far? Okay. Let's get started with our opening prayers like we always do. गुरुर् ब्रह्म गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुदेव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरुवे नम वसुदेव सुत देव कंसचाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्णम वंदे जगद्गुरु कृष्णम वंदे जगद्गुरु ओके तो राधे राधे गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग वंस अगेन टू ऑल ऑफ यू a uh, very warm welcome to today's edition of daily wisdom from bhagavad gita uh, hope all of you are doing great so let's get started we are okay are some we'll get started with the soul soup first and then we'll get to the shloka today's concluding discussion on 5.3 we will see how far we can go with some of the tools related to detachment how do we practice detachment easier said than done uh, so we will talk about that concept today just give me a sec <clears throat> so that so let's get started with our soul soup segment we are on the happiness uh, success happiness and fulfillment series now we spoke about will power that it it resides in prefrontal cortex and today we will talk about how do we forge good habits now prefrontal cortex is where the will power resides the will power that we are able to exert which uh, is usually in short supply unless we have practiced it or developed it like a muscle we do in gym and uh, using that will power we invest that will power in last session we said and said we are going that enables us to form good habits which are beneficial for us and today we were going to talk a little bit about that you know how do we forge good habits it's important to forge good habits because once we have good habits that are our life becomes autopilot in that mode and if it is an autopilot then we don't have to really worry about exerting our will power then we can use that will power to forge another good habit how do we forge good habits so let's talk about that because good habits lead to good life okay i hope you all agree with it if you don't then you still need to okay because we are telling talking about it so how do we forge good habits um through forced repetition okay there's no rocket science behind it through forced repetition so there are two words here one is repetition practice makes man perfect and the other one is forced why forced because it will not come in naturally it's like uh, going against gravity it doesn't take effort to become lazy it takes effort to become active it doesn't take effort to for the snow the stone to come down because of the pull of the gravity uh but it takes effort to throw it up against the gravity so similarly things that are worthy of human pursuit or things that are beneficial god has designed it in such a way that you have to exert yourself to actually achieve it or attain it now there are different uh, how long does it take to form a good habits anybody knows that We're not going to have a big discussion. Maybe one hand. How long does it? 
Arnima is joining as well. Huh? Okay. The wedding girl has joined. Wow, that's good to know. That's a good way to start your day, Shriya. So, very nice. Okay. So, how much, how long time does it take? So, there are different studies. Okay. If we were to draw the timeline, it says 21 days. So, if you look at, uh, you know, some of the researchers who have said it takes about 21 days to develop a good habits. However, it could range from 21 days all the way up to nine months, which basically takes to make a baby, right? 254 days. But it can take up to nine months, really depending upon the habit you are trying to inculcate. On an average, it is said that it takes about 66 days to build a new habit or a good habit. 66 days is typically it is. Uh, and then how does it happen through forced repetition? Now I'll tell you a story to drive home the point. So there was uh, like, uh, you know, Akbar Birbal stories, you know, right? So Akbar uh, once asked his ministers, is there anyone in their kingdom who can make, you know, who can make a goat abstain from eating grass? Goat is not going to eat grass. And then one of the ministers wisest ministers, I'm not going to name him, okay, it's anybody's guess who, who that was, he said, sure, I can do that. So he said, but it will require 60 days. He said, no, I'm going to raise the bar for you. Like the boss, he said, he gave him a deadline of two months to train the goat. Okay, the goat who's not going to eat grass. So this guy, the wisest minister who, whose name happens to be Birbal, he took the goat to the home and he would place fresh succulent grass in front of it. It's like, you know, that warm gulab jamun you get in marriages, enticing you all the way through. So it is placed in front of you. So he would put that grass in front of that goat. However, whenever it would come to sniff and nibble it, what it would do is it would give it a whack on its face. Okay, it, he could afford to do that because I think uh, Menika Gandhi was not active around that time, but it would whack the goat the moment it would, you know, take its mouth close to the grass. And then he continued to do that for two months. Okay, so place the grass, the moment it would fall for it, give it a whack. And then the goat was brought to the court of the emperor and uh, a rope was, it went around the goat's neck and another he had the, so what he did was he put a rope around its neck and he had a stick in his other hand. And then the Bacha asked, does this goat has the self-restraint to refrain from eating the glass? And he said, sure, Varsha. Birbal was very confident. So they placed grass in front of it and uh, the moment goat saw that, you know, the Birbal wielded that stick smartly on his hand and then the goat looked at the other side. So it had actually trained the goat not to eat the grass in two months. Now, if an animal can be taught not to eat do something, uh, even though they are not endowed with intellect, it also gets registered in the mind. Humans can do it as well. But like any other thing, it takes a lot of effort. In physics, we have learned about the coefficient of static friction. When you try to push something which is heavy, the maximum energy or effort is spent in the initial part. Once the ball is rolling, then it becomes easier and easier. And same thing happens if you look at the rocket, like recently Chandrayaan, all we had seen that, right? For rocket to actually reach the escape velocity of 1.2 kilometers per second, which is what it is for it to go around, you know, get into that centripetal force, maximum fuel is spent in the initial part only. And after that, it's in autopilot mode. So same thing for us to break any bad habit, it takes a lot of effort or for that matter to build a good habit. It takes a lot of effort to begin with. But once you are past that stage, then it becomes a natural thing for us. Okay, so how do we build uh, good habits? We'll continue on that discussion tomorrow because it's uh, now we get to our topic of our discussion, Bhagavad Gita, because we're going to have a fascinating discussion around the concept of detachment itself. Uh, but habit aspect of it, hopefully some food for thought in case we are struggling to build a habit. Uh, you know, we, we need to persist for it could range from 21 days all the way up to uh, nine months, depending depending upon how difficult or or chronic habit that you're trying to break. Um, and if you and how, how long does it take to break it? Probably three days. It's called a habit suicide. You you give it up for three to four days, maybe a week done. That is how difficult it is, uh, how easy it is basically to get out of a good habit as well. But anyway, the best way to break a bad habit is not to make one to begin with. Okay, so let's get started now.
not the detachment okay little bit of rearrangement because i'm in india right again bharat again old habits have come in for me so i forgot to switch the slide so i'm going to recite the shloka and you are welcome to follow along gaya sanitya sanyasi yo na dveshti na kankshati निर्द्वंदो ही महाबाहो सुखम बंधा प्रमुच्यते ऑल राइट लेट्स टेक अ फ्यू हैंड्स श्याम जी राधे राधे प्लीज गो एट राधे राधे यस नित्य संन्यासी यो न दृष्टि न कांक्षती निर्द्वंदो ही महाबाहो सुखम बंदा प्रमुच्यते राधे राधे श्याम जी यू बिकम सो फ्लुएंट इट्स सो नाइस टू हियर यू रिसाइट श्लोकास नाउ सो थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सो मच वेरी नाइस राधे जी राधे राधे या राधे राधे ज्ञेय सनित्य सन्यासी यो न द्वेष्टि न कांक्षती निर्द्वंदो ही महाबाहो सुखम बंदा प्रमुच्यते राधे राधे नाइस थैंक यू देजी राधे राधे ओके वी कैन टेक थ्री मोर हैंड्स रिया जी राधे राधे थैंक यू राधे राधे रिया जी ध्येय स नित्य संन्यासी यो न द्वेष्टि न कांक्षती निर्द्वंदो ही महाबाहो सुखम भंदा प्रमुच्यते थैंक यू राधे राधे नाइस आई थिंक वी कैन टेक टू मोर हैंड्स एंड नॉट फेसेस सो प्लीज गो हेड वी कुड हैव टेकन फेसेस एज़ वेल गो हेड प्लीज ज्ञेय स नित्य संन्यासी यो न द्वेष्टि न कांक्षती निर्द्वंदो ही महाबाहो सुखम बंदा प्रमुच्यते थैंक यू राधे 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 प्रागी जी प्लीज गो हेड यस राधे राधे प्रागी जी राधे राधे थैंक यू ज्ञेय स नित्य संन्यासी यो न द्वेष्टि न कांक्षती निर्द्वंदो ही महाबाहो सुखम बंधा प्रमुच्यते थैंक यू प्रागी जी वेरी नाइस सो लेट्स मूव ऑन सो इन दिस श्लोक ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्ण इज सेइंग द कर्म योगीज हु नाइदर डिजायर नॉर हेट एनीथिंग शुड बी कंसीडर्ड ऑलवेज रिनाउंस्ड द की थिंग इज नाइदर डिजायर नॉर हेट free from all dualities now dualities is talking about this yin and yang you know desiring hating victory defeat profit loss this duality is not about dualism and non dualism okay that word is used but uh, just providing a context so that it's not confusing now they are easily liberated from the bonds of material energy now if we rise above the dualities then we have already put a basically it's a stepping stone to rise above the bonds of material energy is it said and done so let's talk about this topic itself in a little more detail so soul soup we have already covered now what is detachment we, let's do a quick recap on that okay pragi ji is and okay detachment what it it is not and then we will also talk about what it is it's an inability to make emotional connections with people uh if you don't do that it is actually a bondage it is not detachment you are attached to something you might be self conscious you might not have an ability to take on uh, or expand your bubble it's actually a bondage and not something which is truly detached when you are truly detached you are free then nothing occupies your mind space at that point right so it's easy to connect with people and uh, operate from a more of a spiritual compassion than a material compassion standpoint but this is a interesting one you know ability to make emotional connections if there is an inability that is also kind of an attachment it's not a detachment 
Now, letting others take charge of your life, we have spoken about this concept. It is uh, definitely a big attachment because why would you let somebody take charge of your life or distribute the keys to your happiness or let anybody dictate? That means that's a kind of a bondage uh, that we need to or a shackle that we need to break out of um, through our spiritual progress. Running away from distress, that is also an attachment. That's not a right way of understanding. When you run away from distress... So people, if you take, they, they take them to sannyas, right? So many people like in, uh, they say that they come and they become monks. But if they're running away from the responsibilities and taking on that life, then that's not, that's not the right way of looking at it. So running away from distress is not the, it's actually an attachment, not a detachment. Becoming dispassionate about our environment, uh, becoming dispassionate about our environment is also Okay, this one, okay, maybe I have to think about it a little bit more um, about our environment. So you have sensitivity, but more born out of spiritual compassion at that point. Okay, so I don't care whatever happens, the person is drowning and no matter what, what is happening around you, you become insulated to that kind of a thing. I think it, it requires a little nuanced discussion, but uh, the way I'm understanding it is when you become dispassionate about your environment, uh, from a sense that, okay, I don't have anything to do with anybody. That is also kind of an attachment that we need to break out of. It's a bondage in our head because um, it's also also a shackle in a way, unless you can look at things from a spiritual compassion standpoint. Now, what it, what it is, it is process of letting go of past experience and future expectations that definitely, if you can, that the power of now, if you can live in the present, it is liberating. It's not binding. Focusing more on the present moment, reiterating the same thing, anchoring on the efforts we make to achieve an outcome. Karamu concept, focus on the process, not so much on the outcome. Because um, uh, like Swamiji, I think he, he is explaining Karamu, right? In when it comes to making efforts, we are independent. We are Swatantra. But when it comes to the fruit of our actions, we are Partantra. We are, we are under, uh, our, uh, under the dominion of God in that case. We cannot say, I, I deserve this result just because I put in that kind of an effort. So efforts, we are independent. Results, we are not independent. We are actually dependent on God for that. And making an effort without becoming attached to the outcome. NATO principle, not attached to outcome. We've spoken about that as well. When we do that, it actually enables us to perform optimally rather than suboptimally. Uh, because when we become hung up on the outcome itself, it can um, lead to a sub suboptimal or a subpar performance because now we are getting nervous, we have butterflies in our stomach and it can paralyze us as well to an extent that we sometimes have seen, it used to be a little amusing to, you know, people would faint on the exam day and they had to be revived. Okay, come back. Okay, you have to still do three hours for of your life still uh, are important for you. So anyways, so that can happen. Now let's move on. So this is where our mind goes, right? Where does our mind go? What, what are the things, let's think about it, what are the things that occupy our mind space in general? Like if you're sitting and not doing Radhe Radhe or Sita Ram or Radhe Sham or Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, what are you doing basically? Think about it. It would invariably go into one of the few, few places. Now, detachment aspect is basically taking the mind away from material world objects and people to whom it is attached. So what are those neural networks or the hooks that we have built in? Let's Look at it a little bit. Few past events. Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Only if this would have happened. I wish this would have happened. Some kind of a regret. Some kind of a thing, right? Past events. Now, if you're using past event as a reflection to take something good to for your future, then probably it's worth. But when we are dwelling upon it and worrying about and regretting, lamenting and those kind of things, are, those are not worth it. So past events take our mind space. Family members take our mind space. It's a good thing. Not a bad thing. Um... But then in perspective, of course, right? What are we thinking throughout about that, right? That can take a lot of our mind space. And what else can take our mind space? Wealth can take our mind space because money is a means for us to buy things that we think are going to give us happiness. Money doesn't give us happiness, but money's ability to buy us things, those things, the potential for them to give us happiness, which are intellect things, does give us happiness. So we're thinking about wealth, how to add another zero uh, zero to our bank account or how to uh, multiply money and things like that, right? Or what is my economic status? How can I become better on around that? That can take our mind space as well. Negative thoughts, 
they can really take our mind space it's uh, it's uh, easy to uh, it's more difficult to get out of negative thoughts because it becomes a habit beyond a point right we spoke about um, the neural networks the neurons that uh, wire wire together wire together so that can become really tricky for us when it comes to the negative chintan negative mindset because that is the biggest enslavement our mind can be subjected to yes usha ji you had a question um radhe radhe usha ji radhe usha ji you had a question usha ji we cannot hear you okay so maybe you can yeah when you are ready okay maybe it was just accidentally okay no worries um negative thoughts is something that can take away a lot of our mind space and that is something we need to systematically work on it they come uninvited and then it can become a thought pattern as well so that something just has to be weeded out immediately okay this is the worst thing we can do to our mind have any kind of a negative thoughts then the bodily issues if we are having some hurt or pain it can take our mind space which is very natural right until we have become beyond transcended the body or become vide so those can take our mind space to take any kind of things right and what we are talking about is taking our attaching our mind to god right that's where we are going to go with all these things which are actually circumambulating our mind or taking our mind space how do we built that spirit of detachment or what is that detachment how we take our mind to god let's talk a little bit about that now so karm yogis as we said detachment from material objects why do we need to develop it it releases us from maya or material energy see the concept is very simple think about it our scriptures say that you would end up achieving whatever you whatever you meditate upon and meditation is what meditation is simply an extended persisting thought you know some thought which is persisting and you extend it for a while it could be few seconds like 3 seconds you thought about somebody it's meditation so small micro meditation 3 minutes that is you can extend it to 3 minutes 5 minutes 10 minutes now if majority of our day goes in meditating on world which is one of these thing it could be wealth family members past events and all if your object of meditation is this world which is where we spend most of our time what are we going to end up achieving object of our meditation very simple concept and when we think about god now you cannot think about god just like that it's like at the back of your mind then you are actually transcending this material world and that is where karma yoga is an extremely important concept laid out by lord krishna karma yoga is the way to go now uh, karma yogi they continue to discharge their worldly duties while internally practicing detachment it is an internal matter not an external matter and then it leads us to the question how do we practically do that how do we practically detach our mind so let's talk about it what are the tools the first one is what we are doing right now which is pursuing knowledge of the scriptures now an increase in depth of the vedic knowledge will lead to increased faith jan uh, gyan leads to faith um, and uh, and strong faith will lead to devotion and love for god when the mind becomes attached to god detachment from the world will be a natural and automatic process right ramayan says jane binu hoy na pratiti binu pratiti na hoy priti so it all starts with proper knowledge knowledge is the key knowledge is the fire which can burn all the ignorance part of it and ignorance is the root cause of all of our problems intent is not the problem everybody wants to do wish do well in life you go to anybody everybody whom you strike conversation with they want to do well because those qualities the goodness doing something good is inherent to us why because we are we are uh, cut from the same cloth as god and we do have his attributes inherently in us we all want to do good so that intention aspect is always there but what happens beyond that intention does not convert into the right technique or the next step that is needed to take that intention to the next level and where does that come from knowledge so even a cricketer if let's say somebody is playing cricket in their young age for them to become a good test cricketer they need knowledge 
they cannot without knowledge they cannot convert all their intentions into the technique and the application that is needed for them to succeed in life and same thing is um, reiterated here as well in the pursuit of knowledge is the most important thing on the path of spirituality now if it comes very naturally to you devotion that means as some aspects of knowledge have already become fructified in your head because of your past samskars but without knowledge you cannot proceed it is very very important thing because it will lead you to faith now if if we had not gone through bhagavad gita we wouldn't have known who krishna is who god is or what is our relationship with god or how do we do actions activities and kind of thoughts we need to harbor to um, you know progress on this path we might actually be regressing if we don't have a knowledge and then we spoke about this concept as well that you don't have to do any minus in your material world you simply do a plus you add god to the mix and rest automatic rest of the things will automatically start happening you don't have to do anything about it it's like when when you pop in a pill if it is an analgesic or antipyretic whatever it is you don't worry you don't think okay now it has mixed with my bile juice and now it has become part of my blood stream and now it is getting pumped by my heart and now i can see it flowing into that vein and to the part of my body you don't worry about that you simply pop in a pill and forget similarly you pop in god in your consciousness as best as you can as frequently as you can and rest of the things will automatically start happening so this is the concept so how does it start by pursuing true knowledge of the scriptures okay you can't subscribe to any the random knowledge where google is telling this or kura is telling you that you got go to the scriptures through a realized saint that is the re real thing so that will automatically help you develop perspective and when you develop perspective then you are not just limiting yourself to being a participant in everything you start becoming more of a spectator and where did that consciousness come through the proper understanding of the scriptures and the knowledge that we got okay yeah. so that's the first one what else is there then you have accept that the material world is temporary shashvatam and dukhalyam is what our scriptures tell us now everything that we possess wealth relatives knowledge it belongs to god and given to us as a gift to enhance our soul's journey towards god realization so it's a it's an arrangement god has made in this life for us so that we can you use these as a stepping stone for our spiritual growth but it's like um, maharaj ji has said right jag ko mano aise dharmshala it's like we need to live in this world as if it is a motel or a hotel or a, or a place of temporary stay so when we go to a hotel do we really worry about the color of the curtains and stuff like that no because you know it's temporary your goal is somewhere else and then we when we keep that impermanence aspect of god in our head always or keep uh, reiterating it to ourselves it will automatically bring in detachment because we know nothing is actually going to take we do have that in bits and pieces it is called uh, shamshan vairagya so maharaj ji used to say swami ji you know uh, he, he was also in one of his lectures saying you know if if you get too much asakt in this world too much attached in this world go to a mortuary shamshan ghat or a hospital for a while and your your detachment will come back very quickly that vairagya aspect of it but the irony is that it it does not last for long it is called shamshan vairagya or akshanik vairagya and then you lose it and you are back in the world uh, doing the things that you always wanted to do it happened to sugriva also in ramayan when ram killed bali and then he said what am i going to do now my brother is killed what do i do with this kingdom just take me along with you i just want to serve you from here on and all that stuff so we also have those kind of movements so ram bhagwan uh, lord ram he simply smiled back at him he said mitra friend you are having a kshanik vairagya you are having a momentary detachment you go rule the kingdom after two months once the monsoon season is over then we'll talk okay we'll do uh, resume the search party again and what happens in those two months he is enjoying chilling out in life okay having grapes watching the dance and then lakshman had to go and remind him you know what you had promised that to lord ram so this is what happens to us as well we also have those moments when we go to mochuri or somewhere oh life is nothing 
finally will be carried out by those four shoulders only you know four feet ground or two feet or six feet whatever depending upon her height right but then that movement that feeling goes away very quickly so that is where it is now um, if you think about the belongs to god part of it i i picked up something i think oops why the link is not working okay now it is working so it's a bit like um, i think i had done that as part of our soul soup earlier so it doesn't hurt to revisit it again now putting relations in perspective what happens basically the vairagya aspect that is where a lot of asakti or attachment is so it is like that rocket booster right you have that rocket launch that happens we have solid rock rocket motors and booster engines and then the booster itself so and then you have interstage adapter which will come in picture and then the centaur has and then finally the spacecraft you have the payload fairing this is how a rocket is launched similar is our journey as well how because dhanani bhumo it says the money land all the land right how many acres or whatever we had acquired and the money that we have put in our bank balance hopefully through lawful means only will stay back in bank and on earth you can't take it the first thing then what happens what happens after that i don't know what happens okay pets cars they stay in the farm and the garage all the pets and garage all the cars all the different fleet of cars that we have equipped they they have to stay back in garage okay you can't do anything with it and pets also you know you have to leave them behind in the farm itself after that what happens bharya grihdware i don't know why they have called wife i mean should have been spouse ideally but regardless they say they go till the door not beyond that and then the friends साथ जिएंगे साथ मरेंगे फ्रेंड्स दे गो टिल द फ्यूनरल ग्राउंड और द बर्निंग ग्राउंड ओके दिस दे कैन नॉट गो बी ऑन दैट दे विल नॉट गो बी ऑन दैट एंड फाइनली इवन द बॉडी इट विल गो टिल द फ्यूनरल प्लेस ओनली इवन बॉडी कैन नॉट गो विद यू एंड फाइनली यू ओनली हैव टू लॉन्च योर सेल्फ and karma is the only thing that you can take al along with it okay so this is how our journey unfolds as well which we think as ours is actually you just know how one by one one by one everything has to be left behind and finally whatever we have acquired as a karma goes along with us in our afterlife journey okay this is a fact so when we have proper knowledge when we understand these things going back accepting the impermanence of things it will bring in detachment as well provided we have sufficiently contemplating on it then um what's going on okay feel grateful that divine and no no okay divine graces and gifts from god we recognize this world is temporary and could be taken away so we learn and feel grateful about what we possess it it, it should bring in the sense of gratefulness as well right okay? because we and we have a tendency to take things for granted that we see human mind is like this under um ordinary circumstances even extraordinary things seem ordinary to you it it the mind joshua bell i think i have spoken about will not get into two details so the same thing which might be actually a wonder un, or a miracle unfolding in front of you may seem very normal to you and you'll take it for granted the moonlight the sunlight that we get the warm water that we get water that we get the air that we get the fact that we wake 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 up every day or woke up this morning the fact that we can roam this earth the fact that we have working faculties so everything is actually a something to be grateful about and when we lose that sense of gratefulness that's where um, uh, we have that sense of attachment as well you know to something that okay i need to hold on to it if you think about gratitude is something that any everybody can do right it did say that uh, uh, a rich man can be grateful to god for having bestowed or gifted him so many things in this life a poor man can be grateful to god for at least giving him the food clothing and shelter and a way to lead his life although it, that person may not be poor and then a poor man can be grateful that you know god has given me the working faculties a mentally deranged man can be grateful that at least you know he's not handicapped or or you know uh, at least he's able to live and breathe and then uh, a dead man is the only person who cannot be grateful for anything but other than that if you really think about 
if we are live, no matter what stage of life we are in, what kind of conditions we are subjected to, there's always something that could be we could be grateful to God for. Knowing that it can be snatched away any moment and we, we have no eligibility or entitlement to stake a claim for that as such. Okay. Um, when we have that, it also brings in a sense of detachment because we keep it at the back of our mind. Anything can be snatched away in a moment. My money, you know, something can come, a financial crisis can come and it can get eroded like 2008 when I came here to US. I think that uh, uh, that subprime mortgage crisis, I think it was at its peak and people who retired around that time, their 401ks were gone. Despite their hard work throughout their lives, anything can happen any moment. We cannot say this is mine for a, any relation that we talk about. What if we lose it? Anything can go away any moment. So when we keep that uh, thing, the gratitude would come automatically and it will also help us um, not only be grateful, but be detached from worldly things as well. Believing that difficulties are a blessing in disguise, um, that is a great mindset and attitude to have. Challenges is something we want to avoid, but uh, it is actually an opportunity for us to take our spiritual growth to the next level and dovetail it towards our internal growth. So if the internal growth is your sole objective in, or the primary or the topmost objective in life, then every situation, the harder it gets, the higher the, uh, the opportunity around it. And um, when we look at it that way, that also reinforces the concept that we are talking about, that Lord Krishna is saying, na doishti na kangshati. That there is neither happiness nor misery in this world. So that difficulty, that situation, that challenge is actually something for our benefit only. When we utilize it that way, then uh, you will not, you will start rising above dualities itself because it's a mindset thing, right? Difficulty. I mean, there's no, nothing to be scared of or worried about. It's actually an opportunity to uplift ourselves. So that also results in detachment because when we have difficulties, we start comparing ourselves with people around, peers around. Oh my God, everybody's life is good. I am only the person. Then you start playing victim mind mindset in your, your card in your mind, in your head and stuff like that. So that is also a good way of looking at it, right? And then if you think about the true nature of this world, it is meant to be a dukhale. That should bring in more detachment that, okay, like it, it happened in the case of Buddha. We were talking about the other day, people saying, oh my God, my, my life is like this or like that. If you really think deeply about this concept, take it to the next level and say, okay, there is a problem. How do I get to the root of the problem and get out of the problem itself? That is what Buddha did. One, you know, incident in his life, looking at old man and, and uh, that experience that he had that, okay, I'm going to grow old. I'm also going to die. I'm not immune from disease. That actually took his viragya or detachment to another level as well. So if you just think a little deeply about this, and keep that knowledge at the back of our mind. Not that we become depressed about it, but it will actually help us looking things as they are, not as they seem because of Maya. Associate with the true Guru, that is a key thing. Uh, they are firewalls of God consciousness. So firewall is like if you, if it's cold here, like in Northern India right now. So we are always looking for the heated places. So I'm attending a wedding and they're putting a lot of poles for you know, a lot of good heat comes out of it. And most of the people, they are coming close to it, right? We don't want to go out anywhere. It's so cold here right now. And true guru is also like that fireball. So when you get in close association with them, you'll feel the heat. Okay, something will, you'll feel something different, some vibe or something like that. And when you come or the detachment from the mundane or attachment to the divine is a natural consequence. So detachment is a natural consequence of when you do the attachment to the divine. Same principle, you add God, detachment will automatically happen. And when you come in contact with the saint, this, this is also one of the symptoms or one of the realizations you would have. True Guru. Practice Karam Yoga. We have spoken about this. Practice Karam Yoga is keeping God at the back of your mind. You can do that. Uh, you don't have to think about God. It just has to be something, a thought, persisting thought at the back of your mind. right? So if you've fallen in love or when you have deep attachment to somebody, you have that thing going at the back of your mind. You don't have to think, force yourself to do that. It's your own identity as well, for that matter. Do you ever forget you're a boy or a girl? Never. Or you, you're a father or a mother? You don't. So that thought will persist at the back of your mind. So what Karam Yoke is telling us, take your consciousness to that level where you know God is there. He's both my protector and my witness. And I'm doing it for his pleasure. The, that thought should always be persisting. Okay, that is essentially what Karam Yoga is. Now you are dovetailing 
it towards a non-binding karma or an uplifting karma as opposed to furthering, further entrenching yourself into the material world. And be patient. Patience is a virtue that all of us need at all stages of our life. Uh, I was traveling right now on plane and it got delayed. And uh, if it had gotten delayed, a few more moments that, you know, that patient, that commodity which comes in scarcity would have blown up for, you know, it was almost like the pilot is going to get beaten up or somebody has to get beaten up today. Okay, could have been air hostess or maybe another passenger. But it was kind of an interesting situation uh, because the plane was delayed. So patience is actually needed. Uh, we need to exercise restraint and patient around it as well because it's not a unit step function. It's not something that, okay, I've been doing this for so long and nothing is happening. So all those things can happen with a lot of people and they start whining and complaining in their head. Am I progressing? Am I regressing? You need to be patient around it. Take that first step and, and rest assured, rest assured, yeah, that it will work for you. It has to work for you. Divine things do work. We have to have trust in that. It's like fire doing its job. Whether you do it purpose, purpose, uh, purposely or no, knowingly, not knowingly, mindfully, unconsciously, however you do that, it it is bound to do the job. Now the pace could vary, which is fine, which is which is perfectly understandable. But losing hope and faith and and saying, oh, I don't know what is happening, not happening, that is not the thing. We got to be patient around it. And and when you journal stuff, when you document stuff, then it'll help you to reflect back from where you were and where you are right now. I'm pretty sure there has to be a progress. It's just about understanding that and then proceeding with assurance and a lot of optimism around it. Okay, with that, I'll take a quick pause and open it up for any questions, discussion you want to have. I know we covered a lot. Yes, Sandhya, go ahead. Actually, uh, today's topic is so well aligned with uh, yesterday's uh, Swami Mukundananda exclusive session in which Swamiji was talking about <clears throat> operating from a detached perspective in our relationships. And that really empowers us. I mean, if we want to develop clarity, focus for any task at hand, only detached perspective can give us that. So that was like very... A solid uh, point that I just wanted to bring and also pointed to everyone that please explore SMX uh, and you will also get to watch the recording of this session so and many other sessions so that's a wonderful opportunity that everybody can uh, explore. I can put the link in the chat. Yeah. It's a good one actually. When you have a detached perspective to something it helps you see things very clearly and operate also uh, more effectively. This is a matter of realization for sure. Yeah, true. Thank you for that. So, Karam Yoga is uh, Karam Yoga is about that only, right? Developing that consciousness because now you're not doing it for yourself. So, that detachment would be a natural consequence of it because um, in devotion, devotion, we are actually watering the root. We are watering the root and uh, Awakening our true self through that. So Karam Yoga is a is like if you ask me one of the things, the key takeaways from Bhagavad Gita Karam Yoga is the is the one. So everything can actually be uh, uh, can be made devotional. Nothing is sec secular at that point. Great. Anybody else uh, with any question remarks? Do we have our feedback tracker link sorted out? Yes, last time it, it wasn't working. Oh, I haven't checked if it is working, but I've shared it. I'll try if it is working or not. So tomorrow we will move to our next shloka 5.4. We'll talk a little bit about Sankhya aspect of it and then get in deeper into that shloka as well, like we did with this one. Any other questions? Detachment, it's a fairly interesting topic, right? We all struggle with detached attachment. There was this or another point uh, that Swamiji had mentioned, which was... Uh, the highest love, the agape uh, love, cannot be achieved if we are not operating with a detached mindset. So basically, like only then you can experience what it is to uh, love. Agape, agape yeah. love, right? Yeah, I missed that session, but yeah, thanks for the nuggets around that. Yes, Shamji, please. Radhe, Radhe, just one small thing. 
is it possible that uh, once we detach we come we attach again we come we, it's, it's back and forth it happens it's not true i mean it can happen it's not true detachment at that point see it's like this um you you might have forcefully done that at this point but you have not grown out of it so seeds are still there so seeds when you keep the seeds protected from fertilizer and other other supporting things then the seed will not manifest but the seed is still there but when the seed will get the nourishment the opportunity and stuff it will start manifesting again so the true detachment would be when you have truly grown out of it as opposed to simply done some symptomatic you know control around it see if if a besan ka laddu is in front of me and i don't eat it then it is true detachment but if you if i'm making you know i'm just not going to see it or keep it away and so that is not because there might be a day you're hungry and it just presents itself then it's not detachment at that point somewhere something is there already shamji but true detachment if it has happened then you are gone out of it basically i spoke told you about that uh, thing right uh, that this person who went to his goes to his i'm saying went so i don't know what's when the cold can make you say weird words so he goes to his guru and says that uh, uh, you, i want to please accept me as your disciple he was a king by the way so he says no i cannot uh, i cannot accept you as a disciple go back so he thought maybe uh, i i was wearing a regal attire and that is why he thought that way so next time he comes again he comes in a very tethered clothes and stuff like that um again the guru says no go back you are not ready yet so he thought maybe he thought i'm wearing these clothes as well so he's he's not thinking i'm to true uh, you know truly detached and the third time he comes in a his birthday suit he lets go of that as well so guru ji said what kind of jokery are you doing so you go back again so he goes back again and then he sits in his uh, meditation and he continues to sit there okay without food for one day 10 days 7 day and guru was checking guru they keep on checking us externally and internally as well so guru goes there and he says you mahatma you renunciate get up so he looks back at his guru and he he sitting he does not even have a feeling that i am a mahatma or a renunciate now so he forgot basically he had forgone that feeling as well so that was detachment previously he was thinking i am doing this i am doing that right even that sense vanished away so that is an advanced stage but we have to take a step somewhere and see hopefully hope that you know the seeds will be burnt and we truly get into that aspirational state so you mean to say when it comes it will not it will not go is that so once come it will not go okay god will make sure krishna has a shield right when you make spiritual progress then i am going to preserve it for you which is a huge mercy of krishna otherwise we are anyway on a suicidal mission every life we will get reset with our attachments so he preserves it for us so you can be rest assured you can rest assured yeah thank you so much so let's trust krishna on that aspect of it and let's focus on what we can do from our end rest let him do whatever he wants yes shilpa shilpa go ahead radhe radhe shilpa ji Uh, Radhe 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 Nitin Ji Sir. So um, I want to confirm something. My understanding of this shloka, uh, mm -hmm. and we talked about. So last year, uh, or a few months ago, uh, we talked about Bhakti's two kids, two children. Being... Gyan and Viragya, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So. that's kind of what i've been following and i i think mm. it's this is along the same terms that True. is devotion and or bhakti you continue to do that and gyan and vairagya vairagya meaning detachment will from yes. the world will just come yes is that okay very true so, you picked up the key concept shilpa i'm just explaining it from another lens okay. but uh, bhakti is the silver bullet if you okay. do devotion you will get everything all by itself so gyan and viragya are the sons of bhakti devi so yes. gyan viragya will automatically follow when you do devotion very true and in order to do bhakti there are things like sadhana satsang seva kirtan rup dhyan those mm -hmm. are the various forms uh, or or ways of bhakti actions true. of bhakti very true. okay true. great Thank you so much. 
bhakti comes from the root bhaj sanskrit that means to serve so seva satsang sadhana they are all different forms of bhakti only okay and with that you can elaborate it further like satsang you can do uh, through kirtan naam smaran now a lot of ways rup dhyan so yes bhakti if you if we focus on those fundamentals 3s we keep talking about seva satsang and sadhana uh, that will take you closer to <clears throat> gyan and viragya automatically so bhakti is the most powerful means this is employing another lens to explain that concept you know how how you can make systematic because bhakti is very durlabh it doesn't come so quickly and so easily so what do we do until then and these are some of the tools around it as well do bhakti everything is taken care of and then once we get gyan and vairagya we have love that takes us to the path of love towards god true gyan ki had hai samajh and samajh ki had hai prem so the the peak of knowledge is wisdom understanding and the peak of wisdom and understanding is love for god the buck okay. stops at love for god even the bible says love love god will all thy heart and all thy might right so yeah thank you so much thank you i just wanted to make sure i that i was on the right path thank you yes you are helpful my pleasure re, re, reassuring that for you okay so you you picked the right nugget there राइट दौलत मिली है इश्क की अब और क्या मिले वो चीज मिल गई है जिससे खुदा मिले सो एवरी वेयर दिस लव फॉर गॉड इज एन रिकरिंग थीम और द की एसेंस पार्ट ऑफ इट सो लव फॉर गॉड इज द अल्टीमेट थिंग इफ वी कैन डेवलप दैट वट एवर इट टेक्स नथिंग एल्स इज नीडेड एक्चुअली एनी वे वे वी हैव वैलेंटाइन डे कमिंग अप सो विल टॉक मोर अबाउट लव विल डू वैलेंटाइन स्पेशल सेशन ऑन ट्रू लव एंड सोलमेट एंड ऑल दोज कॉन्सेप्ट श्याम जी ऑल्सो स्वाति जी प्लीज Okay. Yeah. So uh, actually, the thing that you sh- uh, shared previously uh, about what it is not and what it is. So there, the first point that is inability uh, to make emotional connection with people, uh, and about the environment also. The last point, they are inability. So it is like if you are having some inability, then you have some ability also, right? So then that falls in the duality. Right. So certain people you are not in want to or ready to. so that becomes a limitation even with environment environment may not be like okay you like to go to himalayas and not to the smoky you know buildings so that is that kind of a thing also right true very nice good mapping pratisha like always thank you so okay sir as so a next is uh, i was uh, uh, i wanted to say something actually <laughs> i had a screenshot one second sir You want I'm to say operating something? from the phone. Yeah, I I I need that screenshot. One second. No worries. Um, okay. In the meantime, uh, Sanjay, you want to say something? Yes. Um, so one thing was. You want to show uh, some pictures as well, right? Maybe I can stop. Okay. Should I do that now? Um, yeah. I, Atusha, you can Atusha carry on, Sanjay. Yeah, no, no, she can carry on. I'll just. Yeah, no, I got it actually. I was talking about the goat emotions. so mm-hmm. uh, it's like when we are training the goat uh, with that vacuum it is basically it's not it is not having you know an uh, intellect like common people uh, like our uh, humans right so uh, that means that even when we are practicing something the attachment is always a function of mind right so when we are doing bhakti how important that mind's role is because even if we die not realizing god the attachment itself to god will lead us to a better life where we can pursue our goals very so good. that is why if, uh, the mind's role is uh, very important and when intellectually we are uh, convincing ourselves that you know material things are good and we are running behind that 
when we actually lose our body and we come out of you know our our body the senses everything we, this will be a, like we don't know what to do next so it is always going to be a repetition of our past lives and past some scars because we right. have not done anything positive in god's attitude very true true so if we do our um, we spend majority of our life in spiritual pursuits then god arranges for it so that we can continue on that journey in its life onwards and talking about the goat example see we 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 struggle with habits but we are not able to value it right now i mean if somebody let's say i say okay i feel this doing this and that if somebody says that okay i'm going to knock off you know 10000 dollars every time you do that see how quickly we will align to not doing that it's just that we are not able to see the harm that it is causing in long run immediately if if liver cirrhosis would happen immediately when you drink nobody would drink if diabetes would happen every time you eat sweets or the first time nobody would do it it's a slow thing so we take our chances so that is the thing and with knowledge we can actually curb that thing falguni ji you wanted to add something please go ahead yes radhe radhe falguni ji ha radhe radhe now can you hear me yeah mm -hmm. so yeah so nitin ji i was just thinking that when we say detachment from results like you do, do your work and just be detached from the results but uh, what what i was thinking not thinking of what uh, happens is that from from the time that we are young uh, we are always conditioned to be attached to the results like for any exam that you give and so on so your mind is so much conditioned to that kind of uh, attachment to the results so that when you grow up it uh, becomes little difficult to detach yourself from the result so uh, i mean how does then one work on this kind of uh, um, you know Uh, yeah I'm not very so sure is... whether i made myself clear but because i feel that lot of it is coming from child in the sense that because we are trained like that you know that all know, the time yeah so then that is very afterwards uh, no uh, like so when you are going when is so when you are working you have to achieve this you have to achieve this so then in that case uh, your attachment to you are so much conditioned to attach with the result that it becomes little if not little i think quite difficult to detach oneself from it i know that so it is our conditioning that is happening right that is why we need to do the reverse conditioning now if uh, if we were given the gurukul knowledge then we would have understood these principles unfortunately we are in a world right now and we only have chosen that you know situation circumstances and the and the kind of exposure that we get to begin with now we need to do the reverse you know that that is why we have to Uh, aligned to these principles and understanding the deeper aspects of it right if we if we go by what world is telling us uh, mm. then good luck to all of us basically yeah. so that is where the deeper understandings these help and when you talk about it right from childhood we are told to think about the results mm. understood but now we have yeah. an exposure to this knowledge we, we can rectify that aspect so that rectify. next time around yeah. uh, we get yeah. favorable circumstances and this knowledge becomes uh, Uh, much more uh, much more accessible to us early on in life so even in th this kind of a conditioning if people if you look at some of the super achievers in sports or otherwise they understand these mm -hmm. principles they have kind of understood it through their yeah. experience focusing on process helps them get better results from their uh, you know sports or their performance as well so i can't we understand we are we have bhagavad gita now right so to understand it much more formally but i get your point it's a conditioned state that we have to reverse and yes. uh, it's like uh, uh, going against our true nature because that is what has been fed to us all all through our lives including our corporate lives but now yeah. we are understanding deeper secret so we should look at getting benefit from it and and getting an edge uh, and not resort to the mundane way of taking things or looking at things yeah okay thank you nitin ji no worries okay so sandhya you wanted to show something and then himanshu he wants to sh share something as well yeah and there are some comments as well in the chat uh, so i'll first show and then we'll take that up yeah sure <clears throat> okay all right so these are some pictures of the recent uh, uh, shivir experience that i had my first ever uh, 
साधना शिविर इन भारत सो दिस वॉज तिरुपति साधना शिविर एंड आई गॉट टू मीट लॉट्स ऑफ डेली विस्टम फ्रॉम भगवदगीता क्लास पार्टिसिपेंट्स यू कैन सी शेफाली कमला जी चंपा जी ओवर हियर लक्ष्मी जी लक्ष्मी जी रूपा जी और हजबेंड भैया सो एंड इवन सुधीर जी फ्रॉम चेन्नई ही वॉज ऑल्सो देयर एंड पार्ड इन माई वॉइस राइट नाउ Who's Kamala Ji here? She. आप देखो. अच्छा. Now I know. Okay, okay. Kamala Ji. Champa Ji, I know. Shepali. Rest all faces, I know. Uh, yeah. Rest all, I ever, I know. And who's the the last picture? Sudhir Ji also, I know. This is Jagannath Puri. So this okay. is uh, Hit Prakash Ji. I was telling you, right? So. Hit Prakash Ji. There were okay. so many inspiring volunteers. So after uh, Tirupati. we had an opportunity to visit odisha so i will go to that slide um, we visited the jagat guru kripalu university campus uh, swami ji uh, showed us the huh? i love jk you would not go but rest of the places you know i can relate to when we went there as well this farm uh, in the last picture uh, we went for a walk here and there were you know fresh veggies that we could mm. just take at that point of time and eat <laughs> and I there are so many you mango plucked, trees you plucked mutter from there and mutter and something yes, like and that and they were so sweet sweetest mutters we have ever eaten nice and and you know there are so many mango trees so people should plan on going for the uh, march sadhana shivir the holy shivir you mangoes would have also come they would have uh, ripened we will get to eat them as well so there is more motivation to go there you know <laughs> wonderful thank you for sharing these pics and yeah yes um yeah we we also had a short visit there uh, not too long back so always good to revisit that thank you very much all right yeah himanshu you want to say something go ahead please and then we can wrap it up i have a hard stop today so tomorrow we'll do the bhajan himanshu ji radhe radhe even just wanted to add uh, one point on falguni falguni ji's point that uh, uh, as anidin ji already said because of our conditioning <clears throat> the intellect is not there but we can uh, always change it because initially we are thinking that we need this job and promotion and money for our sake and responsibilities mm-hmm. we can convert it into a uh, karma yoga like divine consciousness by thinking that uh, by doing more hard work and earning this money and contribute this in seva and uh, basically anything and what and everything we do we can just put it into a divine uh, consciousness just by changing our in- and making our intellect firm i know that is not easy but uh if we have 80% of the sanskars which are material from our past life then obviously we will have to work hard in this life and it varies for each and every one so but yeah still we are in this bhagavad gita group that means we all are striving towards it yep wonderful thank you manchu okay we can do bhajan today as well tomorrow i have a hard stop okay so if we have bhajan uh, sumiran kar le we can do that we can take three hands like we always do so if if we have time shall i read the comments that are there we have time we, it's our session all the time Abhi in the world what stop kar rahe the na <coughs> good okay good smita ji says we are more attached to our duty work in daily life so doing it with god in mind cannot make us detached from work for parents there is attachment and detachment also detached from world we will we will do the needful anyways but not with the spirit of okay it's for me and it will not make me nervous and anxious and anxiety that is the whole idea of developing that consciousness that i am doing it for the pleasure of god see the simple simple test about something whether you are attached or not is does it give you worry anxiety fear if it does that means you are attached but when you do it solely with the purpose of pleasure for god pleasure of god it's just a responsibility has given you that is the state you have to reach it is a difficult stage of course but are we going by the theory that's what it is and 
and people in flesh and blood have achieved that stage super consciousness swami vivekananda said that if one can achieve that super consciousness one who is in flesh and blood so can you and i so it's not that we say it is difficult so it's not achievable it is difficult but we cannot say ki no attachment cannot go i mean that's not a correct way of understanding it it's like we are saying no script what scriptures are saying is not right we have to say it is difficult but it is doable with effort and with understanding it will happen over a period of time and it's a journey and from a, uh, like this is a question from my side from the uh, self evaluation perspective when we are trying to practice detachment is it a good idea to think that when i feel i am detached it is actually it could be shanik vairagya and uh, unless you know i have a good enough time and uh, frequency of experiencing this i should not just you know feel confident about that i have become detached don't underestimate the power of maya and a devotee always is never becomes complacent about their you know achievement so it's like whatever is working just say god okay yes if it's working let it be just make sure it persists and i'll continue to do my best because if you become complacent or confident maya has its ways to test you and tell you this is where you are um and himanshu ji had put in the chat roop dhyan is uh, primary it is the life of bhakti like we were talking about different aspects of bhakti i guess so in that context and pratyusha ji singh like birbal racking goat maya is racking us to attach mind to god vacking sorry okay cool hmm. maya is doing the vacking but in a more subtle way maya will not will give you disappointments time to time but we are like again we go back there okay maybe this time like so maya will always disappoint it is doing doing its job of being the servant of god to perfection and it will continue to do that but we are not able to make a resolve and stuff like that right so we continue to derive or hope to derive happiness from world around us as itself and we cry for the world and everything yesterday only i think i was staying when i was saying yeah, that uh, if uh, marachi had said that uh, the amount of tears we have shed for this world across all the lifetimes even, even if we had shed 1% of it for god we would have realized god not once but multiple times how powerful it is so our tears have to be reserved for god but tears qualities also keep on changing but the day the true tear will come the you know sham sundar with himself come and not our sham ji okay sham sundar will come and wipe it off your face that's what maharaj said okay shall we move no, to our different segment yeah. then yes do that maybe sure. we can pick, pick up three hands and and move on um <clears throat> ओके पायल दी राधे 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 पायल जी या राधे राधे एवरीवन अ संध्या जी आई वांट यू टू फर्स्ट गो बिकॉज़ आई 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 फॉलो या हां आज थोड़ा गला ऐसा है ना आई डोंट नो इफ आई विल बी एबल टू ओके आई डू दैट नितिन जी कैन हेल्प या नितिन जी नीड द मीटर या आई नीड द मीटर फॉर दैट या ओके आई विल डू दैट श्याम जी यू वांट टू डू दैट श्याम जी इज ऑलरेडी एन एक्सपर्ट Go ahead, Shamji. Ah, uh, yeah, Radhe Radhe, Shamji. Yeah, Radhe Radhe, I can try, I can try. I can try. Oh, sure. You want to lead? Go ahead. So, mere ne kare le mana, chin chin Radha Ramana. So, mere ne kare le mana, chin chin Radha Ramana. सारा जग नाता सपना साचा नाता हरि से मना जीव लक्ष्य भक्ति से मना मन की है शुद्धि करना सुमिरन 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 कर ले मना 
छिन्न छिन्न राधा रमना राधे राधे थैंक यू सो मच
I think I can recite as well. Tomorrow I'll not get a chance. So I'll do it quickly and then we'll wrap. Okay. Sumiran kar le mana Chin chin radha ramana Sara jag nata sapna Sanchanata hari se mana Jeeva laksha bhakti se mana Man ki hai shuddhi karna Sumiran, sumiran, sumiran Kar le mana Chin chin radha ramana. Okay, so with that, we come to the end of our session today. Please fill out the feedback tracker if not already. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We'll continue with our next shloka 5.4. And um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow then. Radhe Radhe, good night, good day from my side. Thank you. Yes, thank you everyone. Radhe Radhe, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.